Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Psalm TV Podcast. My name is Jason Wise. Happy holidays. You've made it through the very beginning part of trying not to kill your family. At least I have. And uh, I am. I don't know if I'm going to make it through the rest of all of these holidays uh, currently, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. So I hope you guys are all faring well in that department and drinking enough to stay uh, in a good mood. Uh, today, I am going to talk about reality competition cooking shows which is a very strange, pretty recent genre, and uh, now you can find it everywhere. Why are we doing this? Because we just launched Sparklers, our own version of this type of a show, which has a big twist with wine involved um, and uh, a bit of a travel aspect as well, where we uh, focus on regional dishes. But it was a long time coming, and so we finally made one of these things. I'm going to talk to uh, our head of creative development, Nadine Netman, who's on the pod, and she is also the head of our uh, reality competition show development uh, annex that's based in Los Angeles, right, Nadine? Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I need to update my LinkedIn with that now too. Reality show uh, head of development annex. Yes, I'm in. Yeah, it's really an important division that we're starting here. And, and uh, my business and card go- just keeps getting longer. <laughs> that's right. Her and I are going to go through our top three favorite cooking reality competition shows. Uh, but before that, I'm sure your inboxes are just slammed with Black Friday deals. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm here to give you another one. Som TV, we have the greatest deal we've ever done so far. $20 for an entire year. You can gift that, by the way. And if you're looking for a gift, $20 for an entire year. Go to somtv.com and use code BF2021. BF2021. Black Friday 2021. At somtv.com. And you can get for $20 an entire year. Now, if you're listening to this pod, Next week, you won't be able to get that deal. Some TV will be forty nine ninety nine for the year again. So jump on this quick. I would say now, now with that discount, you actually get a reality show in- included. That's right. That's right. As we speak, the first two episodes are on, and and the uh, next reality the- show will be um, your life, and we're going to follow oh. you with cameras and mm-hmm. uh, just you know see what happens. Yep it's uh, it's about me uh, fulfilling my dream to become a dancer, which I had always wanted to do since being a young. A young girl. You know, if you just dance even alone in your living room, you are a dancer. Oh, thank you. All right. (laughs) All right. So how do we how do we start on this? Uh, Nadine and I came up with this idea of sparklers about a year ago. Uh, We were locked down in COVID. The whole thing was a nightmare. And it was like, hey, I have an idea. Let's invent a show that will be impossible to nearly pull off. But here we are. And it's actually real. It's on there. And and some of you listening probably have watched the first two episodes, which are live. Uh, it has a great cast. I really, really am so proud of, you know, how talented the cast is, how great the crew has been. We want to know what you think of this show, but it is, uh, it's been quite a journey. Um, and I want to apologize to you in front of my mom, who is listening, Nadine, for putting you <laughs> through the hell that was making sparklers under COVID with a tiny crew. <laughs> it, it was an adventure. Uh, we got it done. Um But it was fun. It was fun. I love sparkling wine. That's my favorite thing is to drink champagne or sparkling wine. So to be able to be surrounded by it and then have dishes paired with it was really A plus. And uh, got it done with a skeleton crew during COVID and lots of, you know, it turned out really well. I'm really proud of it. And uh, I think I finally recovered, you know, from it. So that's good. (laughs) Yeah. Well, one of the things about sparklers, and I think when we get into our list of our top three, every one of these shows is derivative sounds like the wrong you know, like the, like, like a negative term, but, but it's a comfortable format. You know, I mean, you basically have contestants, there's elimination mostly often there is some theme or some gimmick. And with sparklers, we tried very hard to make it comfortable, but take a new route. And uh, if you watch the show, you know, that odd episodes have a guest judge, somebody famous in the food and wine world. And then the even numbers, whoever won that first challenge becomes the judge of their peers. And it creates a really, you know, that was sort of our quote unquote gimmick for sparklers, aside from the fact that it's all based around different sparkling wines like Krug and Ruin Art Champagne and just incredible, incredible, incredible wines from around the world. So that's what we tried to do. Yeah. I will say the the yeah. the competition show doesn't the competition doesn't just stop on camera. Off camera, while we were filming, there were also some Uno tournaments going on and a really crazy ping pong competition. <laughs> so the competition yes. like was all over, both on the camera and off. Yeah, well, the cast, I mean, they are they they took this so seriously. So I, I guess really fast, I should say, you know, when 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 we made some what ten years ago, I'm like now seventy years old. When we made some, 
a lot of a lot of you know production companies and things came to me and said, "Hey, will you develop a show that's sort of like you know a cooking competition show, but with wine?" And I always said no because the problem is it's there's so many directions you can go with it and so many ways that it could not work. But Sparklers was, I, I, as far as I know, it is the first of its kind that is actually a wine competition. You know, wine pairing is involved and, you know, but it's it's a cooking competition show, but wine is firmly entrenched in the DNA of the show. I, I, I'm just so happy to hear, you know, the positive reactions to the show, but but I don't, I'm unaware. I wish we were doing a list of wine competition shows, but I don't know of any others. You know, I think this is the only one. No. Well, I mean, that's in that way then, if we are doing a list, okay, so name your top wine competition shows. And we're like, Sparklers. Sparklers. Oh, it's, it's the best one by far. <laughs> All right. So let's get into, <laughs> let's give get it into an A the, plus rating. <laughs> it's an A plus. Let's get into the, the concept of a cooking competition show and kind of what, what it means. What are the hallmarks of this, Nadine? What do you think are, what does everyone have to have? I think everyone has to have like some kind of prize at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there has to be some, well, obviously a competition aspect, but also like, I think good personalities as well. I feel like most people tune in for the drama and for the adventure. And so I think there has to be a little bit of drama, not just, not have to be a lot, but definitely an adventure, whether it's like building something or cooking something or chopping something. I think there's always got to be some kind of tenseness there that's going on. Yeah. I also think one of the, maybe just for me, it has to be completely created. So like some, if you were to follow the the court of master sommeliers or whatever, or an MW and make that a reality competition show, it doesn't count for me because that's already something that exists. You know, you're just following a process that was already going to happen. The thing I like about, you know, top chef and all these other ones is that it didn't have to exist. It literally was created out of thin air, didn't need to exist. It's completely fabricated as a and then it becomes an event, you know, it becomes its own thing through its success. So I think for me, that's a, that's a big part of everything. That's at least on my list is that it was just sort of what <laughs> producers came up with it. You know, it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a gimmick and premise. And so our, our rules for this talk today, is it just, it's all culinary type competition shows, right? So but anything dealing with food. Correct. And it can't be a travel show. So meaning like, no Anthony Bourdain, no Bizarre Foods, none of that stuff, because it has to have an outcome where someone either wins or gets some form of approval and succeeds. It has yeah, to have I mean, like I don't a, think there's really competition on Anthony Bourdain's or Bizarre Foods, like unless Andrew Zimmern's probably competing with himself on like weirder things he's eaten. But. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, those are, those are, those fall in the strictly travel show for me. You Can know, I just say real quick, show. there's. Andrew Zimmern eats a lot of stuff I will not eat, but I will eat spam and he won't. So I kind of feel like I win a little bit there. <laughs> we should do a whole pod on spam. I, growing up, my oh, father, my father loved spam. Let's do it. I lived in Hawaii. There are so many different kinds of spam. It's amazing. You go into the store there and just tons. And then I'm back here in California and there's like three. I'm like, oh. You know, this really, we should have used spam as one of the challenging ingredients in sparklers. <laughs> that Season been so great. two. Spam for the win. <laughs> oh, there's all sorts of great stuff though coming for that. So, all right, what what for your top three? Where, where do, let's start. If we have the same one, we'll talk about it at the same time. So, let's start with your number three. What is your um, what is your number three reality cooking competition show of all okay, time? Okay, so my number three is going to be Cake Wars. I love desserts. I love seeing the creations of the cakes. I love seeing like the artistry that goes into the icings and designs and just the whole sculpture of it. So I, number three, I am a big fan of cake wars, not just to watch, but to then try and recreate a cake on my own, which is, you know, usually just kind of like an easy bake type thing and eat it. But I am all for (laughs) cake wars. I think uh, cake wars is like a great example of one of those shows that just builds up insane false energy. Where it's like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And everyone's looking at each other. They draw out the results with this crazy music. And then, yes, like, and then I like, love it. It's like one you, you could win. like sit. Yeah, you could sit and eat popcorn and watch. Like you can't, you're glued to it. Yeah, you don't eat popcorn. You want to eat something sweet, but you are so into it. Like I'm, yeah. Tension is there. That tension, competition, and a prize. Like it's it's the perfect combination. And sweets. I think cake and, and baking is really, you know, it's seemingly so easy to do and so hard. I can't bake to save my life. My sister is amazing at it, um, you know, but if it came to like creatively cooking a dish, I can do that, but I can't, 
you know, it's a science. They say baking is a science more than it is an art. And then, you know, I, it's, it's why it's a really good thing for, you know, I'm, I'm, I have another one that involves baking on my list coming up here. And I just think that's what makes it such a, a good thing for these types of shows is that it's really easy to really mess up. <laughs> Like really mess up. <laughs> yes. Oh, things topple. Like it just goes down. It's crazy. All right. What's what's your uh, what's your third one? My, my my number three. I think. And if there's anybody who truly loves this show, I mean this in um in in a loving way. It is absurd, and that is Iron Chef. It is the most absurd, ridiculous, over the top show. I mean, in almost any genre of this type type thing, competition show. <laughs> They, they use the music for backdraft. They use the <laughs> score for backdraft in their trailers for this thing. I mean, it is the most over-the-top, ridiculous, and totally, like, made-up premise. And I just yeah, love I – mean, I, lo- I used to love that show. We would, you know, in college or it was, like, a little, little bit later, you know, somebody would bring some weed and we would watch – I wouldn't smoke, of course. But we would watch Iron Chef and laugh our asses off. Um, at, at just how ridiculous this show was. It was I mean, that uh, show is definitely hilarious. tense. Like that's a different kind of tenseness from Cake Wars. Like Cake Wars, you're like worried things are going to fall over or something going wrong. Iron Chef, it's just tense. Like the music the entire time and like the seriousness <laughs> of it, like serious seriousness of it. Like you're just, that's tension. They, I mean, they, they treat it like it's, it's like, uh, you know, boot camp and full metal jacket. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's so serious that like people could die. I mean, people could die. It's so, <laughs> It's so great. It's so over the top and so wonderful. I love it. And everybody like is a hundred percent in all the, like, you know, the judges, the iron chefs, all this stuff there. They are, they are so in on this that I wonder if it's like method acting. Are they like this when they step off set? They're like Daniel Day Lewis in a, in a movie where they're like, have to be, you well, know, maybe they take their crap that forever. seriously. Like now I want to know what they are like off camera. Like maybe like they are just that into it and that serious. And that's why they got put on this show. I feel like we need a reality show of the behind the scenes reality show. Yeah, they're at home with their wife or husband. Just like they hear that music in their head. It's like, da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> just when they're like slicing tomatoes in their kitchen. It's so unbelievable. <laughs> That's my number three. I don't know. What do you got for your number two? I think you should like next time you cook should play that music while you're slicing tomatoes in your own kitchen. <laughs> just oh, see if I do. Really There's absolutely it. no question. It drives my wife nuts. I, uh, very serious. <laughs> I make her call me Iron Chef. She hates it. So. Yeah, he says he's playing that music, but really he's playing "Banana Phone" by Raffi. As he oh, cooks. That's true. I do like that song. <laughs> All right, my um, it's great, great inside jokes. Okay, what do you got for number, your number my, two? My number two is a show that I loved starting right at the first season. Was so in, loved the personalities, loved the cooking, loved the competition, and that is Top Chef. I I watched from the first season and then just kept going. Loved it. Loved the hosts. Loved so many of the chefs that when I was visiting California, because I didn't live in California at that time, I would go and visit their different restaurants just to like try their food and meet them. And I just, I loved the way that whole set was, um, that whole show was set up with like the quick fire challenge and then the whole mm-hmm. thing of pack your knives and go. Oh, I was in. That was A+. Yeah. yeah. I, Tom Colicchio is a guy, uh, aside from seeing I've never met him. I would love to someday. Aside from being who appearing to be, and I think he really is a truly great person cares about school lunches and, and, you know, feeding children. And he's a really just seems like a wonderful person. He's a damn good host. I mean, yes. he's, he's, he's intense, but he's really fair and really, uh, you know, clearly, obviously very smart. His kitchen IQ is among the top of the top of the top. Um, but I could, I just think he is a really, really good commentator as well. You know, I happen to, I watch a lot of sports and, that the person who talks you through an event can ruin the event occasionally, or they can make it yeah. a really comfortable, wonderful hang. And he does that for Top Chef. He is just, I mean, Padma, Padma is really good too. Um, but something about Tom Colicchio, you know, I just, I just really gravitate towards his personality. Just really like that guy. Yeah, no, hundred percent agree. I love his little insights and what. When he says what went wrong with the dish, like that little bit of like, okay, could have used a little more acid, could have used a little more salt. Like I love those little insights um, because obviously we can't taste them at home, but yet we still can like experience what went wrong. And oh no, I love, as you said, his kitchen IQ. Yeah, for sure. Well, Top top Chef is my number one. So um, that leaves my number two. I I think I, it's hard not to overstate the impact Top Chef has had on not just the industry, but 
these types of shows. Um, I mean, it's, it's how many times do you have a show like this? And what season are they in right now? It's they are, they are, God, they've been going and going and going. And, I, and honestly, I, I, it's, there's been spinoffs, you know, where they do the Top yeah. Chef Masters and they, and they're all pretty successful. Honestly, it's, if you see the sparklers, like kind of there are elements something. of sparklers. Yeah. Yeah. They started something when they created that show. It kind of set like a, a new, not, I want to not new genre, but like it started this cooking competition method that just started going with other shows. I feel like that was the first one that really put it on the mark. And, you know, as you said, you've got elements and sparklers, like they have a quick fire challenge. We have a perfect bite challenge. They're different, but yet it's just those little things. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's almost, it's hard not to pay, do an homage to top chef, which I'm sure, you know, came from other ideas as well. But I, I would say that that show really, really, really has set a format that's no, people feel comfortable with. It's hard to break from that format. They've just done it so well. It's really, mm-hmm. really impressive stuff. Plus, they get to do really fun stuff where they'll they'll give somebody just a few different ingredients or make them, you know, pair up in weird ways or unexpected twists. And it's it's a very fun way to organize a bunch of people under pressure. Um, Sparklers does not have elimination, and that was one of the big decisions you and I made at the beginning. Was you know these five people who go through the show are in every single episode. But I will tell you, uh, if you have seen the first two episodes, you will not believe where Sparklers goes. I, you couldn't have written this. It's, it's, it's really truly one of the wildest uh, things that happens during this show. And we'll, you know, we'll, I, I, I will keep spoilers out of this, but Holy crap. Um, (laughs) It was such a fun one to to film and see where it went. Yeah. Well, we were only able to have this ending because we did not eliminate people. Um, you know, don't yeah. you think? No, uh, yeah, definitely. And it was good to keep all five together because they were already friends and then they became better friends and kind of went on the whole journey together. So I like that it wasn't eliminations. Uh, it's just crazy how it all kind of turned out and just the different points that people were getting and who was ahead and who was behind. And then it also adds another element because do you vote on the best dish or do you vote on who you want to like be up against? I mean, that kind of comes up to, right. to it as well. Yeah, that's what that's what the reality thing comes in. So. But, you know, it's, it's, it is a thing that I've been asked by the press. There's a lot of press coming out about sparklers right now. And a lot of them have asked me, how did we maintain the contestants not hating each other? And, you know, I have never directed a show like this. So I, I was unaware that things like Top Chef and these other shows have a lot of unhappy people at the end of them. You know, they, they really didn't like certain people and the drama pushes people, you know, to dislike another person in the kitchen. And we didn't really have that problem. So... Mm-hmm. I guess it makes sense, but you know, that question always kind of confounds me because that just didn't happen on sparklers. Everybody, you know, I, what I wonder happens if that's because they were wild, friends but, beforehand, but then again, friends can fall out. So I'm not really sure. I, I also think the environment you created and we all created on set was, was comfortable and wasn't pushing people for over drama stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, if, if you don't, if you haven't ever been on set with us, like we're always laughing, joking around. We have a very lighthearted drunk. set atmosphere. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> All right. Maybe that's true. <laughs> no, but it's always a, a very funny and lighthearted set. And even like now, right now, getting photos ready for the press, it's like, oh, I need a picture of this and this. Then all of a sudden I'll get a text. It'll be a picture of me eating a sandwich from set. <laughs> it's like, we're <laughs> which, not sharing which, that one. <laughs> which should go to press. <laughs> All right, well, I, I, I'll go with, here's here's my number two, since Top Chef was my number one. My number two is one that I love mostly because of my children. So I never gave this show a thought, and not because it's, you know, I'm above it or anything. I just, it didn't cross my recommendations on Netflix or any of this stuff. And it's nailed it. My two daughters, nice. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old daughter, and they love this show. They laugh so hard. They will watch episode upon episode upon episode. I mean, I will wake up in the morning. And they have been awake already for an hour watching Nailed It. And they just think it is the funniest thing to watch these people just really mess up these incredible challenges that, of course, you know, you'd have to be a master baker to make some of these cakes and things that. So that, I haven't actually seen it, but I've heard like they only get a certain amount of time to make like a cake or something that someone else took like a day to make. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's a, it's kind of a great premise because it's set for failure. And that's the whole premise is like, oh, nailed it. You know, like you really nailed what that was, the challenge. And uh, but like, you know, they'll give these cakes like it's a 
it's a cake that's a whole horse. You know, it's like a big horse and it's beautiful and it's like done with frosting and all these layers and everything. And then they have the the contestants try to make it and it it kind of looks like an animal, you know, like but maybe not. And like it's <laughs> it, its tail fa- fell off and it's you know, and, and, and they would use cherries for eyes because they couldn't figure out how to do X and Y. It's just so funny and the way it turns out. It's it I think it's pretty lighthearted in the way that it is, you know, portrayed and That's it's awesome. It yeah, it's like you wouldn't think of of kids children really liking a show like this but they love it you know they really really do i'm gonna have to tune in it sounds like kind of like my, my nice anth- antithesis to cake wars so this will be fun <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like iron chef <laughs> yeah it's, it's, a, it's very uh very sweet all right what is your number one my number one i'm gonna go with a another baking show um that came out a few years ago and has just been a delight and just heartwarming every single time. And that is the Great British Bake Off. I, <laughs> I loved it right from the I first season. They're this. in like a tent in England and they're cooking. You got Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry and all of these lovely British bakers in their little stories. And they're at these tables. And I just absolutely loved it. Like every second was just a little bit of joy. And I also could relate to it when the one, you know, one guy was like, I just kind of gave up <laughs> just then put his ice cream on the table. Um, I just loved it. I thought it was a plus and uh, I loved the host that they had at the time and it was joyful. Now, now, I just have to say something. So those of you who don't know Nadine personally, her mother <laughs> is this incredibly sweet English lady. Where is your mother from? She's from Birmingham. She's a brummy. She's, she's from Birmingham. She is the sweetest, most wonderfully positive British woman. I just you want to hug her. This does not surprise me that you picked this as your number one. It's, it's you know, I can I can picture my mom cooking in a tent in an English garden. I mean, I'm sure she has done something like that at one time. But yeah, I can picture her doing that. And uh, just so you know, um, she's going to re-record Jason's voicemail for him. So if you ever call mm-hmm. him in the future, you're going to hear my mom's voice. It's like, voice hello, in. you've reached. <laughs> so, so cute. <laughs> uh, why, why do you think this show with, you know, all these all these British proper people is so successful. I mean, cause it is a worldwide phenomenon. Why is it so yeah. successful? Honestly, I think it's the personalities. Um, I think it's the personalities of the host and it's the personalities of the contestants and kind of the camaraderie. Like they help each other out a little bit, which I think is really nice. And I think that's something that you and I looked for, for sparklers was kind of more of the camaraderie and the fat friendliness. And that's what they had in the great British bake off, which is why I think it makes it, so much like so appealing i also think there's something charming about being in an english garden and baking as well so i think there's like that double combination of a lot of people love a lot of british stuff english gardens but also just the personalities and the camaraderie is really what took it home for me yeah yeah that's that's great i I do think people are looking for stuff that's nice you know the world is Mm -hmm. the world's a shitty place sometimes and you know with lockdown and covid and politics being thrown in your face nonstop. We, we, we tried this with sparklers and I, and I think um, part of the goal with that show, much like the British Bake Off show, is that it's, it doesn't have to be mean. You know, these people are allowed to like each other. They're allowed to hold each other up. They're allowed. I mean, there's a lot of competition. You know, people want to win and there's a lot of shit talk and stuff like that. But but they genuinely love each other. And I I wondered yeah. a lot why shows have to be, you know, have to focus so much on the, oh, my God, I can't stand this person. Which is, which is fun and it works and it's good for drama, but it's nice to have the other side, I think, too, sometimes. Right. And as you said, like, I think right now we kind of want people, we want people getting along. We want happiness. We want friendliness. And I think we brought, we brought that home in Sparklers, too. But yeah. yeah. Oh, Brit- British Bake Off. That's great. Did you have any that didn't make your list? Any <laughs> any uh, other competition yeah, shows? Yeah, so I... I have, I have uh, two honorable mentions. And so one is going to be um, Chopped. You know, hosted by Ted Allen. I love oh, how yeah. they are given different ingredients and have to use it. And I think there's kind of almost an element of that in Sparklers where like you are given, not you are given, you're given one ingredient and then you have to like use it um, for the perfect bite challenge. So say like they're giving oyster, then they can use like up to five other ingredients to then make the perfect bite. But Chopped, I just thought was an interesting spin on how you have different ingredients like watermelon and you have to use it. I kind of, I like that uh, inventiveness. Yeah, it- Chopped is good. Chopped is good. Definitely very, very creative. Good, good spin on kind of a, a familiar format. Yeah. And then I have another one. I'm, I'm going to throw a little left hand curveball. 
or okay. left left hand curveball. Is that the right phrase? We're I mean, you could throw it. a curveball with your left hand if you're a left handed pitcher, I guess. I'm gonna throw. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Put go me in, coach. It. Go for it. <laughs> uh, supermarket sweep. Okay. All right. So, okay. This is your, so your it, list, you get to do this. Yeah, okay. So this, it deals with food. If you ever like, I, you know, I, I'm in my forties. If you ever stayed home from school when, you know, in like the early nineties, I would see it on TV and they're racing through the aisles. They always went for pampers. Like pampers must be very expensive and they always go for like different pampers. meat dishes. And <laughs> they always go for pampers. And like, you have to get like a certain, I think the most expensive cart. And I just thought it was so fun. It was competition. Their contestants were always laughing, falling over each other. Like, so supermarket sweep. Um, I looked it up today and apparently it started in the 60s. I did not know this. I thought the ones I saw in the 90s were the first thing. So apparently started in the 60s, kept going. And I think there's even a new version now. But I thought that was a fun kind of culinary in a way, you know, cooking or not not cooking competition show. I mean, technically does with food. So supermarket sweep. There's my curveball. That, that definitely, uh, I don't want to say shows your age, but definitely <laughs> 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 it's not, I remember that show. It was great. I was very confounded with the stuff people would try to buy. You're right. Diapers and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't and know. Then, um, DJ, um, and then, gosh, years ago when Dancing with the Stars came out, um, everyone's trying to do other things with celebrities. Remember they had like a skating with celebrities? Well, I went to oh, yeah. a live uh, Oh, I covered, I covered diving with the stars when I worked at Yahoo when I was filming <laughs> did stuff you for really? Yahoo. Oh, yeah. I was like, I interviewed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar before he went on diving of this with the, like literally diving off high dives like i never saw this show but now i want to look yeah, it up I don't on think youtube it did well. i don't think it did well but it, it existed <laughs> yeah. i recovered it i went to a taping of cooking with celebrities and it also did not not go well um i think it maybe only did like two episodes but they uh they took people who didn't know how to cook and then also had no instruction how to cook but had chefs on the stage that would could run in and help them and uh it, they tried. It was it was interesting. It was uh, the audience was trying to help, but yeah, one of those. I guess uh, Dancing with Celebrities was really the only one that like took off and stayed. Dancing with the Stars is still huge. I think. I mean, no, he Dancing with the Stars, not celebrities. But, well, same thing. But the uh, but if you look at what is happening though, you have like Selena Gomez w- with a chef. You know that show, whatever that's called. Then you have like Paris Hilton. That that Paris Hilton show. That I apologize to anyone who likes it. I I watched one episode, and then I went and wandered around on the freeway. I um, watched to all the episodes. I was <laughs> oh so into God. it. It's not a competition show, but no, I was so into legal. it. It's not legal. It's a cooking show. <laughs> uh, we could litigate that show later, but oh my dear <laughs> Lord. I just don't know. I can't. Well, I uh, this has been a pleasure, Nadine. I uh, I look forward to uh, kicking your butt on some future show that we create that I get to be on. And uh, That sounds great. I'm in, <laughs> and I think uh, we'll start off first with throwing baseballs with our left hand. and. <laughs> while drinking yes. sparkling wine and it's, it'll be great sounds good i i don't know how to do anything like that without drinking uh, i wanted can, to remind oh, what can we can do without drinking can we also do a future pod on spam because i'm all in yes spam <laughs> we should do a whole show on spam the history of yes. it the cooking with it it's a whole it's a whole entire sub channel on som tv great so spam baseball and sparkling wine <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> do you need anything else amazing all right, everybody, I want to remind you, SOMTV.com, use the code BF2021, and you will get SOMTV for $20 for an entire year. But act fast, because I believe this is over in 48 hours. And uh, tune into Sparklers. The first two episodes are up, and the next one comes this Tuesday. The show goes amazing directions, and we love this cast and crew. Cannot thank you all enough. Enjoy your family and try to be nice to them.